Okay, um, UK BFF finals. Uh, for those that don't know, I am a UK BFF judge. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean I think they are holier than whole, because I do not. I know they have their fault. But I've been seeing a lot of fix this, fix that, favouritism this, favouritism that. And to be quite honest, it's all a load of fucking bollocks. In the four years I have judged, I have never once been asked, influenced or had my scores altered. I have judged how I felt they should be judged and placed people where I felt they should be placed. I have never once had pressure to change in favour of one person or another and I have never been told anything about one person or another to influence me in any way. However... I am aware, and I know this to be fact, of an incident shortly before I started judging where the, the judging panel was asked to relook at their scores in relation to an individual who had an injury. They had a tear. And the um, information given was that that should have been marked more severely. Now, if this had happened this would have indirectly promoted another individual into the top six, which was what the instructions desired effect was. So even though they weren't directly instructed to alter places, they were encouraged via a legitimate argument. Now, my understanding is that the large percentage of judges did not do this and the judging remained fair. I wasn't there, but I have spoke to people that were, and they have confirmed this to be fact. But they've also confirmed that nothing actually happened to change placings. There is no favouritism. Any influence has always been ignored as far as I'm aware. However, you can't help or stop an individual from having a personal bias towards or against somebody. Now, I can't comment whether that goes on or doesn't. I know I've never done it. And if I've ever had a bias against somebody, I've actually offered to not judge that person to save that situation from happening. Regards to finals, up to the point where I left because of um, a bit of a family emergency, which was the under 80 men's, I was sat next to the statistician and I know no scores were altered, no scores were doctored, and everything was legit. I also would like to say that, in general, the standard was very tight. The classes were very close, and one failing or one mistake or one error or one problem area wasn't losing you a place, it was losing you four or five places because everybody was so tight up against each other. Pretty much on the Saturday Every class had a tie of some form or another. So that's the, the truth of it. I mean, if you stand on a stage and ask to be judged by someone, you then can't bitch because you haven't got the answer you wanted. You asked for their opinion and they gave it you. And that's at the end of the day, all judging is. It's an opinion. In this case, the opinion of nine individuals. It's not, doesn't mean it's right. And on a different day with a different judging panel, you might get a completely different result. But the result is what it is. All this, oh, he's only won it because of this, he's only won it because of that, is bollocks. They've won it because they were, in the minds of the people that were sat there, the best person on the day. It is that bloody simple. If you don't like it, don't bloody compete. However... I am not a crusader for the UK BFF. In fact, I don't think I'll be judging again next year. They have their issues, and I am more than aware of them. The Federation definitely has an arrogance about it, um, and they claim to be the best fed out there with the best athletes, and yet they are very, very twitchy around other federations. And the beef situation, they fell out with a magazine because they were going to cover another show that had 
similar classes. It's ridiculous. Competition can do nothing but be good for the sport and be good for the quality of the sport. Dictatorship never helped anything. So I disagree with that. I'm not a fan of bikini. I understand why it's there. It puts bums on seat. It puts revenue through the door and helps keep the, the federation financially buoyant. But it isn't my cup of tea at all. And I'm not a fan of men's physique. But this is only my personal opinion. Um, I'll give credit to them boys. They might not know when leg day is, but they can come in in bloody condition. Fair is fair. There were some very good quality physiques up there this weekend in very good condition. In fact, some of the physique boys made the bloody misters to shame when it came to condition. But in general, the standard across the board was very close, very tight. There wasn't particularly that many physiques that were outstanding, but they were all very close to one another, and it was a good quality show. A lot of disorganisation on the first day, which annoyed me something chronic. I mean, like, they constantly tell you guys, we don't get paid for this shit. We get expenses. Now, all right, the expenses are decent, but it's not a free-for-all. Uh, for a full weekend's work, my expenses out of pocket after fuel for food and everything else was £75. So it's not a fortune. And like I said, the first day suffers from a lot of bad organisational problems um, and a lot from arse not knowing elbow. There were some major clangers dropped, one being that they forgot to differentiate the heights within the women's classes and therefore had to redo them all backstage, which caused scheduling issues. Now, another thing you get hearing about is, well, they only place the top six. Well, when there's 25 competitors on stage and everybody's moaning the shows take too long as it is, there is just not time to place any higher. I know it's unfortunate for the guys because they want feedback, they want to know where they came. But unfortunately, time constraints and size of shows and keeping it interesting for the public just means we cannot do it. It's a struggle to get the top six sometimes in the time we have. Now, the big bone of contention, and I've seen a lot of people moaning about this, the women's classes. Now, there's two things going on here as far as I can tell. Um, I say this is only my opinion at the end of the day. There's been a lack of direction from the Federation via judging. Uh, there is a conflict within judges as to what each class really should be especially fitness, body fit, and women's physique. Um, and there's a certain amount of crossover. And this is lack of direction as Leicester girls being very confused about what's expected of them. There's been inconsistency even in women's body build. Uh, you can't have Rennie one year as a champion and the next year Rosie. Don't get me wrong, both quality physiques got the greatest respect for both girls this is not a slating on them as individuals or their physiques it's just their physiques are chalk and cheese so how is somebody supposed to know which way the federation wants them to go when they're giving mixed signals through mixed results like that <coughs> but there is another side to this you can only judge what's sat in front of you and if all the girls that turn up for body fit that day are shredded, then the winner is going to be shredded. That does not mean that that is what body fit classes are supposed to look like. It just means that was the best on that day out of what was available. The problem is people see the results from that show, don't bother to look at the rest of the class and assume that's what the Federation is looking for. And it's not. It's just what was available there. And therefore, you have to, oh, what do we do? Do you turn around and say, sorry, none of you win. See you later. There's no placings because none of you fit the criteria. So unfortunately, that does send out mixed signals. But you can only judge what you're presented with. Now, women's physique. I'm actually in support of this. I think this is a good bridging class between body fit and bodybuild, and I think it's proven to be a very popular class. Now, that one I do really like. Um, 
I'd say the other ones, I know why they're there. They turn over revenue at the end of the day and they're popular. They're just not my cup of tea. And that's one of the reasons I'm considering not judging next year is I don't enjoy it anymore. I mean, if I'm perfectly honest, I didn't enjoy this weekend at all. In fact, it was crap. Nothing to do with the quality of the physiques or the shows. It was just not a nice time. Um, judging was dragging on. It was very long days, very tiring. And to be honest, I'd like to have a bit of downtime, meet friends, talk, chat. And I'm not getting a chance for that. You know, I mean, I'm dashing out, going to the toilet, having to dash back. So, though I'm a tight or sod, I will have to start paying for my tickets and turning up to these shows as a paying customer now. Uh, but let's say I want to set the record straight on a few things. The Federation is far from innocent. It's far from fault-free. There are a lot of problems within it. Um, some may get addressed, some may not. But it is not the crooked, dodgy setup that it's always made out to be. There has been incidents, but they are not as clear-cut as people would like to make them out to be. And the Fed does, to a point, invest in athletes abroad. However... They also invest in sending judges to judge these shows abroad. And they don't differentiate that when they give you these totals. Now, in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, there are judges on that panel that shouldn't be there. That couldn't judge a fucking apple pie competition. But they may look at my results and feel exactly the same way. At the end of the day, it is only our opinions. But I feel there are two or three that really need to give it up. Uh, there are a few that are glory hunters that aren't really do the work but like the prestige of the position, if, the, if there is any, to be honest. But I suppose getting trips to uh, the Arnold in Europe and all paid for expenses is, is quite nice if you can get it. Um... But like I said, you know, it, it does what it does. You're not forced to uh, compete in that FET. But if you want to go that route and try and aim for your pro card, unfortunately, that's your only choice. Or move to the States. Um, it's not all bad. It has good points. And a lot of work does go into these shows. And that's what a lot of people don't see. The average qualifier is 12 hours of work for a judge. In setting up, registration, judging, closing down, you've got about 12 hours. Stick on top of that, sometimes two, three, four hours travelling each way, and they're bloody long-ass days. And, you know, I think people forget there is a hell of a lot of work goes behind organising these events. And people don't always appreciate that. They're very quick to criticise when something fluffs up and goes wrong. But... There is a lot that can go wrong with these things. And at the end of the day, they try and accommodate everybody. And some of the delays on Saturday were due to competitors registering late, turning up when they shouldn't have been there. And instead of booting them out the door and saying, no, you can't compete, they try to jump them in. But once the numbers and the stat sheets go down, you've got to run around about a dozen people to get all those changed. It's not just one number that needs changing. DJs need to know, judging panel needs to know, compare needs to know, backstage needs to know, magazines covering the show need to know. So, you know, it does have a really big knock-on effect and people don't realise it. I would like to say as well, though, really like the venue. I thought the Harrogate Centre was a cracking place and I like the fact that the hotel, even though they had the world's uncomfiest bloody beds, um was ideal because it was bang next door, there was ample parking, a lot of the problems that normally associate with Nottingham didn't have. So I really liked the venue and it'd be a shame if it didn't go back there in future years. Well, anyway, that's me, a bit ranty maybe, but uh, over and done with, and no doubt this will cause a bit of uh, talk and chat and big bobs from people. Anyway, take care, speak to you all soon.